Okay, <laughs> we're going to talk about prong collars today. Um, talked about prong collars before in the past. We're going to talk about um, um, prong collars you should get and prong collars you shouldn't get. Or we're going to talk about um, prong collars that you get at uh, at the novelty store, which would be PetSmart, Petco, those kind of places. Anyway, it's a big old prong collar. And they got them hanging on the shelf. They're just kind of hanging there. And um, they don't have any directions or any with them. So, you know, it's kind of a shame they just put them there. And, and uh, people buy them and then they take them and, and put them over their dog's head and so on and so forth. It's really bad, these, these type of prong collars. For one, these prong collars, the prongs go in the same direction. They follow in the same direction. So if you uh, put this on a dog and you try to correct the dog, from one side of the dog you're going to get one type of correction and you go to the other side of the dog you're going to get a completely different type of correction. A lot of people will put these uh, prong collars on and the prongs, these big old nasty prongs, will be up against the bottom of the dog's neck down here. See a lot of people will put them on that way too. But anyway, the, and then they'll, they'll correct the dog from back here. There's no how, no way I want my dog to have these big old prongs pressure putting pressure on on his windpipe or anything else I mean it's just really really bad and and dog will really fight you uh, as far as this type of correction so this is all incorrect you definitely don't want to have a prong collar that slips over a dog's neck or over his head excuse me and you don't want one with the prongs that all go in the same direction um, so this is a terrible prong collar you take them and throw them in the trash or Trade them into your local dog trainer that knows how to use the prong collar. This is the Herm Springer prong collar. Um, I like these for a number of reasons. For one, the edges on on all of the prongs are nice machine. They're nice and rounded. They're not sharp. These here are pretty sharp. Check the one that you might have, and it's pretty sharp edges. And this is rusted too, by the way. It, about the same age, no rust, rust. Um, so the prong collar, I like these, when you put it together, it's got a piece in the middle here. And that little piece allows the prongs to be turned in a different direction, um, which gives you, what happens is, is you get the same correction no matter what side of the dog you're on. You know, I granted most of the time you're going to be on the dog's uh, left side, or he's going to be on your left side, your dog's right side. Um, some people do it differently, but there are going to be times when you're going to correct the dog from different positions. Um, when you go to put the prong collar on, it should never fit over the dog's head like that. We discussed that. It should. You should have the dog in a sit down in front of you, and you take the D ring, the only ring that I use, and I put it down here. Have them in a sit, and you put it on top. And you secure it and you can see that the prongs are all on top and they go right behind the dog's ears and there's the d-ring right there under the dog's right ear that way when you correct the dog it all happens right here on top and nothing down here and when you control the dog's head you control the dog wherever the dog's head's going to go you're going to the dog is going to go so a correction is very minute it's just very little just Pull it up like that and there it is dogs gonna react right yeah I know you don't like that um, so it, it's a very easy correction it, it's not um, anytime that you have the dog on a prong collar um, there's no need for a um, another attachment from the o-ring to uh, another collar you notice Max only has one collar on, that's the prong collar. Many times Max doesn't have any collar on because he doesn't need one. So I off-leash train Max quite often. Uh, he doesn't need a, any type of collar at all. Um, other times we refine his, his work and, and we do put a prong collar on. But for the most part he doesn't need one. And that should be the ultimate goal is not having a prong collar on your dog at all. Um, but you should never have the prongs on the underside of part of the dog's neck. You don't want all those digging into, you know, his windpipe and, and all the important stuff in here. 
and you never want to use a prong collar when it's tight meaning the only time that the prong collar or the leash should be tight is when the dog is getting out of line and then you're going to pop him and bring him back so it's just a quick pop and it brings the dog back to the position you want him in and that's it i mean so if you have your dog on a walk or any other type of training and the and the lead is tight then you're using it improperly the 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 leash should never be tight you should always walk your dog as if you're off leash does that make sense so um you're walking your dog uh, the way i tell people is, is carrying plates so you got plates and then you take the leash and you lay it on each hand kind of hold it like this and then you walk your dog okay so it's always very loose and then the only time it gets tight is when you grab it here and you correcting the dog that's it all the other time you should have a loose leash it should never be tight your dog should never be fighting you when you're walking on that leash okay it should never be tight at all um, and you'll get a lot more training done a lot quicker um, and this is what the prong collar is for it is not uh, it's not for the dog to wear all the time it's for training that's it training so you you got five ten minutes of training you take the collar off you don't leave the collar on all day long i mean it's just gonna it's just a train wreck for the dog so please don't do that don't keep it tight don't keep that leash tight because that's just incorrect you're not getting a correction out of that you 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 know anything more than that is just pure abuse anyway um so this is my take on the prong collar please don't buy these don't use these um you know just picking this up right now it's pretty sharp these edges are fairly sharp um certainly you don't want this big old thing digging into our dog's neck i don't care if it's a pit bull bully or dang great dane or whatever this is just the wrong kind of prong collar to be using on your dog um, so throw those away and don't use multiple collars on your dog just use the prong collar you could have a flat on there but don't attach the prong collar to the to the flat collar why would you do that you don't need to a lot of people are paranoid that the you know that the prong collar is going to come undone i guarantee you this you put that prong collar that herm springer prong collar on correctly it ain't coming undone it's not right never had one come undone but we've never had him lunge with a prong collar on we don't use it for bite work we don't use it you know and that's it you know we use a prong collar for a correction that's it and if you're barely correcting the dog then you don't need another leash on there you just don't need it thanks for visiting house of canine and thanks for watching our video and uh, subscribe to our channel and place your comments below and we'll uh we'll have some good conversation uh, thank you very much visit our website houseofcanine.net thank you